Hey, welcome to the next Conversations with Brent. Today, you're about to be entertained, not just because of who he is, but what he does. Let's welcome Big Scott of Big Scott Entertainment to Conversations with Brent. What up, Scott? Brent, Brent, it's been too long, buddy. How you doing, man? Hey, man, I'm great. You know, one thing I always tell people about you is the Amish breakfast you took me to in Philly. Man, I can't wait to get back and get some of that good old Amish breakfast. Hey, man, my Amish is my people, man. They they do a good job, and, you know, that's my thing, man. We go there, and we, 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 we broaden our horizon. Yes, sir. So one thing I've learned about you is you like to have a good time, whether we was riding in your old school, going to the park, or just out meeting people. But I think one thing people need to understand about you is you don't like to have a good time. I think I heard somebody say years ago, party with a purpose. Everything you do has a purpose. And I think what I would like to start out with is what made you so purposeful in everything you do? Because you're very intentional about everything you do. I mean, I think coming up, man, I come up from Camden, New Jersey. Camden's an urban city that uh, we don't really get a lot, man. So, you know, when you talk about entertainers and you talk about getting out, you know, you have a community that doesn't get out like they should. So my thing is, if I can bring stuff to them, I, I have a pride in doing that, a pride in doing that, a pride in seeing thousands of people actually come out and have a good time. So, you know, my purpose is, man, just doing some things that I know when I grew up, I didn't have. So giving people that now, you know what I'm saying? Right. And, and you all, he's being modest when he say thousands. He's drawn anywhere from three to 8,000 people at some of his events. So don't let the little modesty fool you. That's just who he is. But uh, one thing I realized, man, and we're going to put some links to some of your YouTubes. We'll put the link to your website and also social media. But I think the thing that uh, impresses me the most is you hang around a lot of people. People would love to get to know, but you're still just that day, everyday guy that you meet on the block that you love to hang out with. And how did you get so well connected? Um, I just I just found a niche for it, man, you know. Coming up, I, I found myself, you know, being around people and the people that I connect to, like yourself, I look for that good vibe. You yes, know, sir. that good vibe is there. That's kind of like my motto, man, just bringing people together. You know, a lot of times if you bring that right core of people together, um, it's no telling what you can do. So, you know, like just growing up, man, like I realized that, you know, that was my thing, man. And I, I enjoy doing it. You know, it's a pleasure watching great people come together and you know that you're that person in the middle that made it happen, you know? Yeah, definitely. And so when you talk about putting on events, a lot of people look at like, wow, this great event. But we both know there's so much more that goes beyond the scenes from sponsorships to venues to the stereotype of what type of people you're bringing how do you navigate all those different challenges? Man, I'm glad you asked that question. Um, one of my biggest thing is, is it's really difficult when you get these events, these venues, because a lot of them really don't welcome Afro-American people, pe brown people, I'll say. Right. A lot of them, and, and, and I don't mean to be standoffish with it, but when you bring a thousand brown people together, these facilities really frown upon that. So a lot of the stuff behind the scenes can be very, very touchy, you know, like, so, you know, when doing it, you have to be very careful. You have to make sure, you know, your, your eyes is dotted, your T's is crossed because, you know, at the end of the day, man, like these are these people's establishments and they got to go on after that last event that we might've just done. So it's, it's, it's even important for when people come out you know, we coming out to have a good time, but we got to treat their facilities like it's like it's ours, too. You yeah. know, because if we leave it wrong, they don't want us to come back. You know, and like I say, man, I'm I'm 57 years old been doing this thing for a few decades now. And, you know, at the end of the day, you know, it's still hard. I mean, to the day I do events and going back is always like, you know, they really don't welcome it. They like our money but they don't want to deal with us as a people. Right. 
And, and you know, Scott is, is unique and maybe not unique that you said that, but I was talking to some people the other day and I told them about rent parties. And it's like, yeah. what are rent parties? I said, in the African-American community, we used to look out for each other. If you were struggling yeah. to pay your rent, we throw a rent party, help you pay your rent, people bring food. Now we want to talk about each other. And it's like, we got to get back to what made us great and unique. And somewhere along the way, we lost that. And I know for you, it's very important to show, uh, set a standard and show the way for young people. Why is it so important for you to control the narrative to our young people? <clears throat> I mean, I think that at the end of the day, you know, growing up, we look at our situations and now we look at these young people's situations and we didn't have social media like they had. it. Right. So, you know, when we're able to get in front of them, we got to deliver some type of positive message and stop worrying about being their friend and at the same time, try to educate them. You know, I think a lot of the older people are so accustomed to fitting into their jail instead of letting them see kind of like what we've been through and where we're at and how to get to that longevity. I mean, you can ask um, <laughs> probably 70% of young people, you know, what's an asset and what's a liability. And they fall apart with that because we never really sat down and showed them. Right. You know, I got people 35 years old, man, that I talk to, and sometimes they just don't get it, but they want to get it. They want to get it, but nobody ever talked to them. You know, nobody ever taught them what a credit score is and, you know, how to go to the bank and, and build up, you know, build up some some credit and some, you know, they, they just never been taught. And, you know, I always, when people ask that and talk about that, I always look at Black Panther and I say, it's amazing how, you know, we have a certain group of black people that are making it and a right. certain group of black people that are not making it. And the ones that are not making it, we shy away from them instead of educating them. Instead of educating them, showing them what we got, showing them how we got it, right. and hoping that that next generation can keep building, 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 building. And, you know, I just think as a people, man, we we we, we lack that. You know what I'm saying? Oh, definitely. One thing I did, Scott, and people told me I was wrong until they seen the result. I told my kids everything I did, man, all the stuff that my parents didn't know, stuff I would should have been ashamed of. But the reason I did it is I wanted them to know not to grow up with an unrealistic expectation of being perfect. You're going to make mistakes. You're not going to always get it right. So I think that took pressure off of them. And then the values my wife brought to the table, it, it gave them that ability to be themselves and not have to worry about being perfect. So as we get ready to wrap up, man, uh, like I said, I want to make sure we put links. But before we do that, just tell us how they can get in touch with you. And then maybe something you got coming up. Um, they can go to www.bigscott.com. Uh, my Instagram is bigscott609. Um, we normally do two major events through the year. Uh, in July, we always do an all-white party. Okay. Uh, in November, we always do an all-black party. And our parties always have a purpose. Um, we do a toy drive with them. Um, we do a mentorship program with them. Mm -hmm. uh, and what I mean by that is, you know, once the party is over, we always try to link something with the party. Okay. So, like I said, like I said, well over three decades, I was told to say, you know, because it's, it's <laughs> well over 30 years, but y'all know what I mean. But, uh, you know, we just been always trying to connect the dots and help our community grow. You know what I mean? And that's so, so important. And, and that's awesome, man. And so we see your shirt. We know the area you live in. And, you know, I had to wear it, man, because, you know, at, at, the, at the end of the day, you know, let me make sure you got that real good. You know, <laughs> at, the, at, the, at the end of the day, you know, I see your shirt in the background, but like, you know, I, I, I'm, I'm thinking Super Bowl this year and not, and not just going to the Super Bowl, right. but winning the Super Bowl. You know what hey. I mean? So so you heard it first right here. Yes, sir. And my thing is this, man. You've always repped your city. You've already always repped your area. And I'm proud to know you. And I know the city is proud to call you one of their sons. But I tell you what, this year, 
I'm saying it now. I'm going to make one of your events. Every year I say I'm coming, and I'm going to try to wrangle Mr. Spikes in with me so we can come at least to the all-white party in July. I'm going to hold you to that, brother. I'm, yes, you sir. know, always got that VIP seat and table waiting for you, brother. Hey, man, I appreciate it. Scott, can't thank you enough, bro. I'm so glad you agreed to do this. Once again, I'm going to make sure we put all your links, all your socials. And one thing I want to want you to leave us with, how can people support you? What can they do to support you? I mean, just when we're doing events, man, you know, sometimes you got friends that uh, say that they can't make it supported, buy a ticket. You know, sometimes you have companies that, you know, that you've known these people for years, you know, support it, be a sponsor, you know, be a $5,000 sponsor, $50,000 sponsor, 500, 10, not whatever, you know, right. do what you can do. And, and we really got to do that with all of our businesses. You know, pe brown people need to start realizing if you're connected to something, just support it so it can grow, so our community can grow. You know, we look at all these other communities, they do it with each other any way, anyhow, that we can build our community and make it stronger. You know, let's go, let's do it. I mean, I'm from Camden. I live in Camden. You know, I try to keep everything right here instead of taking it outside the community, you right. know? Hey, yeah. man, and I know they appreciate it. Bro, once again, it was a pleasure. Thank you so much for agreeing and uh, much success and much love, bro. All right, brother. Peace and blessings, man. Keep doing your thing, Brent. All right, you too. All right, peace. Later.